So let's talk about test questions here. Well, one test question. We don't want to overwhelm. Um, I'd like to talk about fill in the blank questions, but uh, I know you guys are all way too uh, over prepared for that one. So let's go straight to the good stuff. Fill in multiple blanks. Um, that's a question type that you can put into a test. It incidentally also will work in a mobile test uh, so that students could easily take it uh, using the Blackboard mobile app. Um, the descriptive helpful information that is available about multiple blanks is okay, but uh, the key element to remember is that you're going to be setting up a sentence with designators for where the blanks will be. And each blank will need a separate designator. So, let's take this one easy, okay? Oops. Okay, that's our sentence, right? And this is a strategy I would suggest for when, at least when you're starting out with multiple fill-in-the-blank questions. Type in your sentence, then decide which words you're going to replace with blanks. In this case, let's go adjectives here. Quick, brown, lazy, all right? So, quick. We're going to replace that with a placeholder. Placeholders are between square brackets. Since I'm replacing the word quick, I'm just going to use Q. That's going to help me remember later on that it was quick for this field. Similarly, B for brown, and yes, L for lazy. Okay? So what we have here is the Q, B, fox, jumped over the L, dog, right? All right, now you may have noticed already that the button here to click is not submit, it's next, because there's, of course, another step to this process. Um, I do want to point out, it was off the screen on my uh, computer here, that with a fill in multiple blank questions, you can allow partial credit. And for this particular question format, that makes sense. So I'll allow partial credit on this and then move to the next screen. Okay, it shows me my sentence with the placeholders. And for each placeholder, you get to determine how many answers, and then there's some parameters on how you answer. Now, you can have, dear lord, a hundred possible answers for each blank. Um, that's impressive. <laughs> uh, but in this case, there's really only one correct answer for each one. All right. So this one obviously is going to be quick. Now, with fill in the blanks, you have to decide what alternate spellings will you accept. Okay, with this one, there's really no alternates to worry about. But if there were more than one word that would have fit into that blank perfectly well and that you would accept as correct, you might want to give multiple possible answers and fill them in. Now, another thing to check is whether or not you want to be case sensitive. Um, in this case, I do. I would not want someone dropping capital letters into the middle of my sentence so they can just type it exactly the way I did. Anything different's wrong. Okay, there are other options, like you can have any fill-in that contains some string of letters, or a pattern match, which is a little more complex than I want to get into right now. Okay, so for this, we're going to say quick, brown, again, case sensitive, and lazy. Naturally, when you're filling in these answers, your spelling matters just like your students will when they answer. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next screen. Look at this, three screens for this. Fortunately, this third one is just the feedback screen. Works the same as feedback on all the other question types in Blackboard. We submit this. And now we're back at the test canvas, and this is what a uh, fill in multiple blanks question looks like on the canvas. Uh, you see that it shows you the sentence as you typed it, and here's a list of all of the answers for Q and for B and for L, and the criteria that we set on all of them happen to be the same with exact match and case sensitivity. But you can see that if you had more answers uh, for each blank, it would just have longer lists and a little more detail there. All right? So, you might be wondering, how on earth does this work when it's taken as a test? <laughs> well, to answer that, 
I'll hop into the system with my student account and let's get a nice good look at this. Here's the uh, test. I deployed it and I'm going to begin taking this as a student. It only has the one question in it. Multiple fill in the blank. The blank blank fox jumped over the blank dog. So clearly this is quick. Pink fox jumped over the smelly dog. I mean, that has to be the correct answer, right? And then we'll just go ahead and submit that. Confirm the submission. Let's see the results. And this is how it would look for students when they had taken the test and were reviewing things. I set up this test to show um, both the uh, correct answers and what I put. So I put quick. That actually was correct. That's why I got that one. I didn't get those two. And uh, in fact, because I set this question to be worth one point, and yet I allowed uh, partial credit, I got a third of a point uh, on this test. It is not so good on the final grade. Um, <laughs> but that is, in a nutshell, how to do the fill in multiple blanks and how it looks when someone actually takes one of those things. Now, naturally, if you wanted to just fill in the blank, you only put one placeholder because there's only one blank. But fill in multiple blanks gives you the flexibility to have more than one element in the question. And uh, as a result, you'll probably want to set the point values of these questions higher than average since it's that much more difficult to get full credit.